Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today's video is going to be really fun for me because I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, I've often wondered what would happen if one of my guitar building idols ever came to my shop. Now, most of my guitar building idols are dead, uh, but some of them are still alive. And um, I'm going to start this, uh, this off with my guitar building idol, Paul Reed Smith. And I'm going to call this video, What Would Paul Reed Smith Do? So um, there's going to be a lot of people who probably aren't really hip to why I'm doing this. Um, first of all, it's my one day off, and uh, so it's no better time to do it. No one else is in the shop but me. I can come in here and I can make this fun video, and uh, I can just sort of imagine what it would be like um, if Paul Reed Smith made a guitar in my shop. Um, so you're going to have to suspend disbelief on some of this stuff. Um, this is just my idea about what he might do if he came in here. Um, again, there's... <laughs> You, I can't imagine a scenario where he would ever be like, hey, you know what I need to do is go to Texas Toast Guitars and make a guitar with Matt. Um, maybe, but uh, that would be cool. But um, uh, but it's just sort of fun to think, you know, what, what would Paul Reed Smith do if he came here? I'm going to get a little more into the weeds on what the concept of the video is here in just a second. But a lot of people will go, well, it's easy to tell what Paul Reed Smith will do. He's still doing it. Yeah, you're right. Um, and you probably won't like this video because it's creative and it's fun. And um, so, yeah, you might as well just, like, if you're that guy, you, you probably don't want to watch. Um, so, but let's get all that out of the way. Guys, you're going to have to suspend some disbelief. I don't know Paul Reed Smith. I've read some things about him and I've seen some videos that he's made. Um, but what I can tell you about Paul Reed Smith is in 1989, when I was learning to build guitars at, at Roberto Van, everybody there was going to be the next Paul Reed Smith. Now, none of us became the next Paul Reed Smith, and that's okay. But, um, you know, he really was uh, one of my very first guitar building heroes because he was the latest guy. And he was, you know, he, he was sort of the new kid in town. And, um, this was well before you could go to Guitar Center and buy a Paul Reed Smith. You know, you had to, they, they just weren't everywhere. And um, of course now it's, it's a known thing, but you have to step back 30 years and, um, and it was a very, very different time. So um, anyway, enough with the bullshit talk. Let's jump in. I've got, I've got uh, the idea here is that I've got a whole day. It's my day off, remember. Um, well, let's give it, show you what, what it says here. All right, on my phone, see what time it is? It's 10.50, and um, again, it's my day off. The, the premise of the video is, what would Paul Reed Smith do if he wanted to come to my shop for whatever reason and, uh, and build a guitar using the tools and the materials that I have here in the shop? Um, so, you know, like he didn't get to bring anything and we're not going to go get stuff. This is just what I have here in the shop. What would he, uh, what would he do? So I'm looking forward to today. It's going to be really fun. Uh, I'm going to try to basically get the whole guitar done in one day. No one's going to be here telling me, uh, uh, you know, asking me to do other things. So very cool. Um, and as far as me working on my day off, that's a tricky one. You know, I read something somewhere, uh, people talking about, well, what would you do with all this other spare time that you had? Um, the problem with me when I get a day off is I usually spend it goofing around, watching TV, or doing something that is unproductive, and it's just not my style. And since the rifle range is closed, nah, I'm not going to go there either. So let's build a guitar uh, in the style of what I imagine Paul Reed Smith might do if he came to my shop for a day. So there's not a ton of material in the shop today for uh, Paul Reed Smith and myself to choose from. Um, I don't have very much mahogany right this second today, and I don't have very much maple right this second today. I do have some swamp ash, and I do have my secret stash of white limba. Uh, the problem with the swamp ash that I have is, uh, it's not really a problem, but uh, the, the blanks are three pieces. They're three piece blanks that I got from my buddy Dan at Guitar Wood Experts. And um, I certainly don't think Paul would have a problem with making a three-piece blank, a uh, three-piece guitar. But I think if given the choice, he would rather do a two or even one-piece um, 
guitar. So I've eliminated the um, the swamp ash. The uh, the same kind of thing goes for my white limba, my secret stash of white limba. It's really cool. It's really dry, and I'm I'm like, man, maybe he would want to go with that. But again, it's not wide enough for uh, a two piece body. Um, so I might be wrong here. Maybe Paul would would have chosen my uh, my white limba based on you know the way it the way it. But um, uh, and it does sound good, but I do have one other thing, and that's this piece of black limba right here. Now, this piece is, um, it's not a particularly wowie zowie piece of white or black limba, but it is big enough to do what we are going to be doing today. Wow. Um, and, wow, my kid. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and use, uh, and use this piece of black limba. Um, I cheated a little bit. Uh, I, I went ahead and, and put together this PRS um, template because, and the fact of the matter is, you guys, I think that if, if Mr. Smith was coming to Texas Toast, he probably wouldn't want to build a Paul Reed Smith. He can build those all day long. He would probably want to make something that we make because I, I just figure he might be like that kind of guy. Um, but no, no big deal. Uh, I think for the sake of this video, we're gonna we're gonna reproduce a Paul Reed Smith body. Since Paul is not here, however, we are going to be using one of my neck blanks or my headstocks just to keep everything on the up and up. Not that anyone would think this was a real Paul Reed Smith, but just in case, we don't want we don't want to irritate anybody, right? And this is just for fun. So anyway, so this piece of black limba is just barely big enough. To, uh, to work for what we are going to be doing today, uh, but I gotta be creative. That is to say, Paul Reed Smith has to be creative, and uh, I'm gonna show you how we do that now. One of the things that I've learned about Paul Reed Smith through reading and watching videos is that he was a super fan of Ted McCarty from Gibson. Um, so I also think that the Black Limbo is gonna work out great because, um, you know, in 1958, uh, the Explorer, the Flying V, and the Modern were introduced by Gibson, and they all used um, uh, white limba, and um, all looked really cool. Um, and I think Paul Reed Smith might have really thought those guitars were uh, were, were kind of curious and fun. And so we're going to go ahead and put this together as though it would be a um, the the Paul Reed Smith version of a 1958. Um, Gibson style made out of uh, made out of limba. In this case, we're using black limba. Um, so I got I got my board here. Let me let me adjust the camera so you guys can see. So the board is just barely big enough to do um, you know what we're gonna do. So my neck is gonna come out of this hunk here, and the um, the upper chunk of the body is gonna come here, and the lower chunk of the body is gonna come from here. Um, it's going to be tricky. We're going to have to kind of do some creative sawing, but that's no hill for a climber, right? Um, fretboard, we're going to use this piece of catalosh because I have it. Um, because we're doing sort of a 1958-inspired Limba Paul Reed Smith build, we're not going to be using bird inlays. Uh, the main reason we're not using bird inlays is because we only have a day. Uh, and again, because those three original 58 Gibson guitars were not carved, this will not be a carved top. Um, with apologies to Mr. Smith, I know that he makes awesome carve tops, but again, we've got one day to do all this stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some creative sawing and cut all this stuff out. Then we're going to glue the body halves together. While that's setting up in clamps, we're gonna get started on the neck. And um, after, after we get the, the, the fretboard glued on, maybe we'll take a break for lunch and come back and kind of get some stuff uh, a little bit further along. So this is going to be a fun day, you guys. Uh, let's go get started.
tell you what, I really needed for this project was a cameraman and someone to clean the shop for me in between moving from thing to thing. <laughs> All right. Well, we got plenty of glue on our, uh, our body glue up here, and it's 1115. Um, so I'm going to, it's 1116. So I'm going to uh, write that on here so I don't have to remember. And we'll come back in probably after lunch, and we'll go ahead and unclamp this guy, and we'll be able to work it. But in the meantime, let's get cracking on the neck. Okay guys, it's not even noon yet and Paul and I have already hit a snag. Actually, nothing's gone wrong with our build so far. Um, our neck is pretty much ready to, uh, to get a truss rod. And that is, I think, where um, uh, Mr. Smith and I would probably part company. In fact, there's probably lots of, lots of ways that we would have parted company well before now, but again, you have to suspend disbelief. So, um, the truss rod that uh, Paul Reed Smith uses is this right here. It's a single, it's a single rod, but it's a dual acting rod, and it's a three sixteenths steel with a, a, a silver soldered on adjustment nut. And it's got to be silver soldered on because you see this guy here and this guy here. Those are both threaded in place um, with right hand ten thirty two threads and left hand ten thirty two threads. And he sets this into the guitar, kind of like the old school uh, Gibson. Um, or fender, or they still use it, but this is the rod that he uses because um, it, you know, it, it's 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 more vintage, and he's got the 21 rules of tone and, and stuff like that. So um, I think he would probably um, not agree with my choice of truss rod. This is the truss rod that I use. Now, not everyone knows this, but I'm kind of a truss rod nerd, and the reason I'm a truss rod nerd is because of Paul Reed Smith. I found out that he kind of deep dove into truss rods and so I wanted to try them all myself too. And what I came up with is in my experience is this is the rod that I like. This is also a double acting rod. Um, it's easy to install. You don't have to backfill anymore. Um, it rattles just as much as, as his rod does because all double acting rods will rattle. Um, they're really affordable if you buy them in bulk and uh, we've never had an issue with them. So with apologies to Mr. Smith, I'm gonna use this rod on the build. Um, again, it's, you know, guys, this, this rod is, is kind of his, his deal, 
Um, and one day we'll do a deep dive into truss rods, but not today. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get this truss rod installed into our neck, get our fretboard slotted and, uh, and glued up, and then we're gonna take a break for lunch. But we got a lot of work to do. Okay, let's get to it. Okay guys, everything is glued up. Our fretboard is glued to our neck blank. Our um, two body halves are glued up. And uh, let's see, what time is it? Let me get my danger glasses on here. It is 12.21. So um, Paul and I are gonna take a break for some lunch. We've gotta run a couple errands and we're gonna let this stuff set up, um, which is a good thing because you know glue has to dry a little bit, right? Um, it's my understanding that they use some sort of like UV activated glue at, uh, at Paul Reed Smith guitars. That would come in really handy here, wouldn't it? So um, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a little bit and we'll pick up where we left off with more cool stuff. See you then. All right, so I'm finished up with lunch here. I even had a Dr. Pepper because uh, I saw a video, Paul Smith was drinking a Dr. Pepper. So in honor of him, I had to have one. It is 119 and uh, as you recall, we, uh, we glued up the body just over two hours ago. So um, I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and pull the clamps from that and get the body going. And hopefully by the time we are ready for the neck, we, we can, uh, um, we can be ready to use that. I had to switch the batteries on the thermostat. It was like 85 degrees in here. Whew. You know, if you're working on your day off, you shouldn't have to be miserable. So, all right, let's get to work, guys. Lunch break is over. All right, maybe it's not all the way All right, I think it's a good time to take a little breather. Check what time it is, let's see. It is almost two o'clock. Okay, and my glasses are covered with stuff. So, um, our body is pretty good here and the neck pocket is done. Um, we talk a little bit about what we did uh, in the past few, few steps. We ran the body over the shaper and um, you'll notice that because this is all big enough to go over the shaper, I didn't have to, you know, do some of it on the pin router and do some of it on the shaper. It actually is pretty good. And that's one of the genius parts of Paul Reed Smith's uh, body design is it's very makeable in a factory, if you will. If you guys have ever watched that 1985 video, uh, the Paul Reed Smith factory, it's like just a bunch of guys in a great big building with tools not unlike what I have here. They say that the shaper is definitely a tool that they use, so I feel good about that. 
Um, I was able to use the Paul Reed Smith template, style template that I made. Um, you'll notice that I, I put it on one time and I did the outline and then I took it immediately over to the pin router and did my neck pocket. <clears throat> but we're done with this template now. Uh, I did pull the clamps off of the neck. I had to to make sure that my neck fit nice and tight, which it does. The more times you put the neck in the neck pocket and go and you know step back to assess your work and go, wow, cool, and hold it up like this and send pictures to the forum and stuff, um, the looser it's going to get. So just keep that in mind. I don't want to do a whole lot of stuff with the neck just yet. I want to do as many things as I possibly can while the glue sets up. No, it's not in clamps, but I'm not, you know, banging it around, uh, bashing it against stuff. So, um, but it's been in clamps for a good long time now. Gosh, what should we do next? Um, we'll eventually need to put pickups uh, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the body, but I want to have the neck on to do that. So what we can do without the neck right now is um, kind of work on the control cavity. In another break from the Paul Reed Smith exactly like they do it at Paul Reed Smith. We're not going to use that uh, that kind of swoosh control cavity because I don't have one. We're going to use uh, we're going to use a control cavity from uh, a Les Paul double cutaway, and that's cool because Paul Reed Smith made some of those way back in the day. In fact, you might be able to argue that the Santana model is not too far from that. All right, so we're looking good, guys. Uh, let's um, let's keep plugging away. Well, I wish Paul was here so he could tell me where these controls go. Um, I'm just going to shoot from the hip. That looks pretty good. Um, I guess we'll see. And I guess you guys will tell me if I get it wrong. <laughs> So the very first Paul Reed Smith guitar I ever had had a volume control, a five-way rotary switch, and this thing called the Sweet Switch, which was a little mini toggle, and it was supposed to, mm, I think, mimic the sound of a really, really long chord. Um, but my, uh, my Paul Reed Smith McCarty has just a regular toggle switch. So I think we're going to go with a volume, a tone, and a toggle. Again, if Paul was here, maybe he would tell me what he thought. But again, I'm just sort of taking a stab at it. Woo, it's still hot in the shop, you guys. Um, that's not a bad thing, it's just, it's just a thing. Probably shouldn't have worn a black t-shirt. So it looks like all the stuff that we can do to the body is done. Um, I, got the, uh, I got the holes drilled for my controls. I got my hole drilled from my jack. I even put a little round over on it. Now, this is the part where if we were at the Paul Reed Smith factory, I, I think I know what would happen to this body. It, at this stage or maybe even before, it probably would get cut in half. Um, not because we did anything wrong, but because the wood just didn't want to cooperate with us. So this big, um, this big brown patch right here, there's a wormhole right there. And I thought it might go away, but it didn't. And that's sort of the, you know, the way that it goes. There's also, when we ran this over the shaper, I don't know, let me see. You see that there? It, it tore a little chunk out and the round over also didn't take that away. So at this stage of the game, if we were at the Paul Reed Smith factory, I think that this guitar would get cut in half because they, you know, they, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just taking a wild guess here. Um, big guitar companies kind of have to sacrifice a lot of guitars that independent boutique builders like me might not have to. That makes sense? So, um, you know, we could put up, we can put up, uh, a, a, comfort contour here and maybe that would go away. I, not all Paul Reed Smiths have that. Some do, some don't. Um, so I don't know. But anyway, remember guys, you have to suspend disbelief because this is just my ideas of what Paul Reed Smith would do 
were he in my shop. Anyway, but this is still going to be a cool guitar. It's a little on the heavy side, but, but you know, sometimes the black limba is... How about this? Every limba, except my secret stash of white limba, is, uh, is usually heavier. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. It's time to start working on the neck. Let's see what time. What time do we got here? Remember, we only have so many hours. 2.33. So, um, all right. So what we need to start working on is um, we need to trim the rest of this fretboard off. We need to um, do whatever inlay we're going to do. We need to radius the fretboard. We need to set the neck into the, um, uh, into the body and work out our, um, our pickup routes. And that's always easiest to do. Plus, we have to make a... Um, uh, we have to cut it away for the, um, the bridge that we're going to use. That's an intriguing question, isn't it? If this were one of the original Paul Reed Smiths from the 80s, it would always have one of those man tremolos. Uh, if it was a McCarty, it would probably have one of those, um, you know, a, a, like a wraparound tailpiece. If I was doing a what would Joel Danzig do, I would probably use one of my um, great big high mass bridges, but we're doing what Paul Reed Smith would do. So we'll probably go ahead and get this uh, set up for a standard two nomadic height bridge. Uh, we may not use a two nomadic. We may use a wraparound bridge because I'm liking those these days. But anyway, so we'll get this so that the top of the fretboard to the top of the body is about five eighths of an inch, which is just about right. But the first thing we have to do is we have to clean up all of this all this stuff and get it looking a little more like a neck. It looks mostly like a neck now though. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay guys, we are in the home stretch and it's a good thing because it is 447, so our day is almost done. Um, it's just about time to say goodbye to Paul Reed Smith for the day and my memory card on my camera is uh, just about used up. But we got a couple more things to do and we have to shape and profile the neck and we have to thickness the headstock. Um, I also have to drill some holes from the, pickup, from the pickups to the cavity. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to haul ass and finish this up before 6 o'clock today and um, uh, then I'm going to come back tomorrow probably and do a wrap up where I tell you all the things that, uh, all the other things that I think Paul would have done differently if he were here. But we've got so much more stuff to do. Like I said, we're in the home stretch. Let's get it done.
I can't believe I forgot one of the most important things that Paul Reed Smith probably would have done if he was here, and that's to put this little scoop thing uh, on the uh, on the cutaway. Hope I have enough time on the uh, the old memory card to get this going. Okay, guys, can you imagine if I would have forgot to put that little scoop thing on there? Um, there is eight minutes left on my memory card, and it is now 5.38, a.k.a. beer 30. But let's just, uh, um, I've, got, I've got a few minutes here. I want to I wrap it up for today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and do the whole, like, you know, spiel at the end and maybe talk a little bit more about some of the things that I think Paul Reed Smith might have done differently. Um you know, uh, than, than I do given half the chance in addition to the trust ride. But anyway, check it out. Um, like I said, I put my head stuck on here. Um, oh, there's the little thing. Of course Paul Reed Smith would put that on there. That's kind of one of his signature things, right? So as you can see, the neck is carved. Um, I still have to drill a hole from here to here to here, but that that's, uh, we could do that. But yeah, I think I want to drink a beer instead. Um, so yeah, Black Limba, what would Paul Reed Smith do, guitar, and it sure was fun to um, spend my day off in the shop, kind of imagining what it would have been like to have one of, you know, the, uh, the great guitar uh, entrepreneurs of the uh, late 20th and early 21st centuries. What would happen if he came to my shop and did this? Um, lots and lots of fun. So I'm, I'm about to run out of memory. I'm going to go home and, and, uh, and, and juice it back up again. I'm going to start with a brand new memory card tomorrow. And, you know, we'll do the wrap up and we'll talk a little bit more about the guitar. And maybe if Chris is here, we'll, uh, we'll talk to him. What time did we even start? Like 10, 30, 11? It's now just before 6. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty decent day's work. Completely unsustainable. But... You know, if you want an actual Paul Reed Smith, they'd be happy to make you one. I bet you they made more than I did today by like, uh, like hundreds more than I made. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, gang, it's the next day and it's the afternoon, not the morning. Uh, but in keeping with the tradition of me wearing this shirt that I got from my friend Devin, um, every time I need to come back in and do a little bit of extra filming, I've got this shirt on that my friend Devin gave me because I'm coming back in to do a little bit of extra filming. So anyhow, um, so yeah, I had I had tonight or uh, last night to kind of think about what uh, what I what I did or didn't accomplish with the what would Paul Reed Smith do guitar and uh, looking at it again, I feel really good about it. Um, there are some things that, uh, uh, like I said, this this guitar would probably be destroyed in the factory because. The wood has done some stuff like in the neck here, there's, a, there's another one of those worm holes there. And you know, that's, that's kind of the problem sometimes with working with some a material that's not completely homogenous is what looks awesome when it's a board can still suck by the time it gets turned into a guitar in terms of, you know, wood occlusions and things. So, you know, that's just kind of the, the price you pay. Um, but I think this is still a really neat guitar and we'll, we'll probably one day wind up turning it into something. I don't know how close we came to what Paul Reed Smith would do if he came to our shop for a day and hung out. Um, what do you guys think? Obviously this is probably not the headstock he would put on there. Actually remember the very, very first part of the video I said he would probably build something that we build here because first of all, why would he come to this? To our shop if to just make one of his guitars um, he would probably want to build something that we make which would mean he would have to you know know who we are and, and stuff like that um, but anyhow uh, so yeah I think I got all the all the elements though that that make this a cool one day one day project man and I even got the little the little scoop out thing there that didn't show up very well on the Instagram picture um, but it's there uh, so yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you think Paul Reed Smith would have done if he came into the shop and used the materials that we had on hand um, to build a guitar in one day? Um, I'd love to know what you guys think or what you have. Uh, maybe maybe Paul Reed Smith came to your shop for a day and built a guitar, and you can tell me 
not what you think he would do, but what he actually did. Um, wouldn't it be cool if Paul Reed Smith came to Texas Toast Guitars and spent the day and, and, uh, and made a guitar with us? Uh, if anyone knows Mr. Smith, please let him know that our door is always open. Actually, one of the guys from the paint department at Paul Reed Smith sent me an, uh, uh, an Instagram message um, about this just yesterday. So, who knows? Anyway, guys, if you like this video, uh, why don't you give me the thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click the subscribe button? We've gotten a bunch of new subscribers lately, and thank you to everyone who is subscribed to the Texas Toast YouTube channel. Um, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this that I do on my day off. <laughs> um, uh, but if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just um, share the video as many places as you can possibly think of, whether that be the Paul Reed Smith Forum or with Paul Reed Smith himself. Um, that really help, would help us out a ton. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. Or if Paul Reed Smith comes to your shop, maybe he would make something cool just like he did when he came to my shop. We'll see you all next time.